Assalamualaikum guys. Today we are going to start our next topic, uh, Beyonce. If we talk about the Beyonce, then it is a force that is going to be act as an upthrust force on the body when your body is immersed in any liquid. So how we can define the buoyancy that when a body is immersed in a fluid, an upward force is exerted by the fluid on the body. This upward force is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the body and is called the force of buoyancy or simply buoyancy. So how you can determine the buoyancy that is equal to the upthrust force on the body and how you can measure it quantitatively it will be the weight of the fluid displaced by the body whatever the fluid when uh, the body is immersed in a body is going to be displaced by the by the body that weight is equal to the force that is going to be act in upward direction on the body like an upthrust and it will be equal to buoyancy force or force of buoyancy center of buoyancy it is defined as the point through which the force of buoyancy is supposed to act. As the force of buoyancy is a vertical force and is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the body. So the center of the buoyancy will be the center of gravity of the fluid displaced. So for the center of the buoyancy, we also interested in the fluid that has been displaced by the immersed body. If we going to be measure its weight, it will be equal to force of the buoyancy. And if we are going to be determine the center of that displaced fluid, that will be equal to center of buoyancy. This result is known as Archimedes principle. When we have the reaction caused by the weight of the fluid displaced by the body in upward direction, mean the buoyancy force, that will be less than the weight of the body itself. Then your object will sink down inside the fluid. If the weight of the body is less than the force of buoyancy, then the object will float on the surface of the water. But if both are will be equal, the weight of the body and the weight of the fluid displaced by the body, mean the force of buoyancy, those will be equal to each other. Then your object is neutrally buoyant, mean it will remain in place without either sinking or rising. These are the three cases that we will discuss later in, the, in this topic for the stability of our floating bodies or the bodies those are immersed in the liquid. It's very important. If any body is going to be immersed, going to be uh, uh, put down into the water, into the fluids, then we are interested in the actual weight of the body that can be measured by it. Okay, so either your body can sink within the fluid or it may float at the surface or it may be, be neutral. So for all of the cases, these three conditions can be set for the stability of your body that has been immersed in the fluid. So your force of buoyancy will be a very important factor that is needed to be calculated for the immersed bodies in the liquid. How we can explain the Archimedes principle? We have been talking about it in the previous slide. So your Archimedes principle is like that. If any uh, body in the air or like freely, if it is going to be uh, measured by its weight, it will be 5 kg, let's suppose. So this 5 kg can be measured by any weight. Okay, so here in the figure, you can see in the dial, the weight of the body is 5 kg. And in the dial, it is also going to be measured as 5 kg. Now, if you are going to be immersed this 5 kg weight, this mass into the fluid and you are just keeping one outlet to measure the fluid that has been displaced by this body okay then what is the resultant weight of the body after immersing inside the fluid that is the point of interest over here so if this 5 kg weight has been immersed in the fluid then we can say that this 5 kg has replaced or displaced 2 kg of the water out of this total water in the container so that can be come out from this outlet and we can collect this water outside in any other container and we can weight separately this water that is 2 kg of the water okay so if this 5 kg 
mass has displaced the water within the container equal to 2 kg then what is the leftover weight of this body it will be 3 kg now now after immersing within immersing within the fluid if we are going to weigh that particular mass now it will not be the same as 5 kg now it is going to give you the total weight of the body before immersing into the fluid minus the water displaced or the fluid displaced by this body that will be equal to 3 kg so 5 minus 2 kg so it will be equal to 3 kg now your body weight will be reduced and it will be equal to 3 kg and what where this 2 kg is uh, going to be incorporated within the system this 2 kg is going to be act or going to be used as a, a force of buoyancy it will be act on this particular body in upward direction this direction will be upward so in upward direction this force is going to be act on the body on the mass and this will be like an up thrust force on this body and this up thrust force will be equal to force of buoyancy and this buoyancy force will be equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by this object immersed in the fluid this will be equal to 2 kg so if you are going to be multiply it with 9.81 it will be equal to weight of this body this this fluid okay so it depends on the density also if the density of the fluid is different then it may be th this force of buoyancy will be different we will discuss this later on this point so if 2 kg is the force of thrust up thrust is going to be acting on this uh, mass then it is going to reduce the total mass of the body total weight of the body okay so in this way this force of buoyancy is going to be acting on this body now the center of buoyancy will be the center of this fluid that has been displaced and schematically we will discuss this in the later slides now if a body is immersed in two fluids that is the case and situation here you can see in the figure this is the margin line in which immixable fluids are going to be put in one container in which the upper one having a fluid of density rho 1 and the bottom one have fluid of density rho 2 and if one object has been immersed within these two fluids having a certain surface area uh, in contact with the fluid of density rho 1 upper fluid and a certain area surface area has been immersed in the fluid of density rho 2 then how to get the force of buoyancy for that this force of buoyancy and center of buoyancy may be different depending upon the density of the fluid if the density of the fluid is different for the different fluids then depending upon those the force of buoyancy and their center of buoyancy will be different here in this figure for the upper part of this body that has been immersed in the fluid of density rho 1 this is going to be having a certain volume v1 center of buoyancy equal to g1 and the beyond buoyancy force or force of buoyancy is represented in the form of upward thrust that is r1 acting on this body upper part of this body and for the lower part for the bottom part that has been immersed in a fluid of rho density rho 2 here you can see the an upward thrust equal to r2 that has been acting or that has been passed through the center of buoyancy g2 and v2 is the volume that has been displaced by this body uh, of that, that that is immersed in the second fluid now up thrust on the upper part can be calculated mean the force of buoyancy can be calculated equal to rho 1 g and v1 acting through g1 the centroid of v1 okay so this acting through g1 g1 is the center of buoyancy for the upper part and the centroid is v1 okay centroid mean the centroid of this whole body upward thrust on the lower part r2 will be this one and uh, this will be the through g2 that is the centroid mean the center of buoyancy for volume v2 so total up thrust force can be calculated by adding up both of these up thrust r1 and r2 so here you may have the can be can, can be focused on the position of g1 and g2 here the g1 and g2 are not going to be passing through one vertical axis okay if you are going to mark one axis then g1 and g2 are not coinciding with each other these are not maybe necessarily on the same vertical line and the center of buoyancy of the whole body is therefore not bound to pass to the centroid of the whole body this is the result in the most of the cases you may get the, the you, you may mark the center line and you can observe 
that the let's suppose if one center line has been marked for this body and we can say here is the center of gravity of the body itself and that is uh, c and here you can say is the g only one center of buoyancy so if this is the particular case then we can say the center of gravity of the body itself solid mass and the center of buoyancy mean the center of the the point of uh, point where the buoyancy force of buoyancy has been acting is capital g so both are lying in on the same vertical line okay but most of the cases some of the cases it may it, it doesn't happen like this case when the body is immersed in two different kind of the fluids in which the density is different so for that the center of buoyancy will be different for these two different parts on the same body now we talk about the meta center what meta center is it is defined as the point about which a body starts oscillating when the body is tilted by a small angle that was the case in the a part you can see in the figure below you can see that the same object that is rectangular in shape that has been immersed in a fluid up to a certain depth the whole of the body is not going to be immersed into the fluid okay up to up till a certain certain depth this body has been immersed in the fluid now if you are going to be marked a normal axis that vertical axis passing through the center of buoyancy b and the center of gravity uh, centroid of the body itself if g capital g is represent going to represent the center of gravity of the body and the capital b is going to represent the uh point of I mean the center of buoyancy then both of these points may lie on the same vertical axis that is the normal axis okay so if this is the particular case so without giving a tilt without rotating this body or applying a certain rotation to that that it will be in equilibrium let's suppose your b is uh, lower than the g and your body is in equilibrium now if for a certain body of the certain system it is required to give a certain angular displacement in a right or left direction if it is required then for how much you can say angle uh, it may be in a stable condition then what about the equilibrium it may be in equilibrium it may not it may be in stable position it may be in unstable position we will discuss in the later slides i mean coming slides about the stability of this body but now we are talking about the meta center yes meta center is uh, going to give you an and the changed position of the normal axis now let's suppose this normal axis has been tilted okay here you can see this normal axis having the centroid of the body and the center of the buoyancy so this center of buoyancy and centroid of the body is not going to be changed because after giving the angular displacement how the centroid of the body uh, can be affected how its value is going to be changed it depends on the total mass of the body we are not changing the mass of the body we are not changing the shape of the body we are not changing the weight of the body so weight of the body will be the same so what does it means that your g will be on the same position it is not going to be changed now what about the center of buoyancy so actual center of buoyancy now your force of buoyancy is going to be acting on the same point okay because your water that has been displaced the fluid has been displaced by the body it will remain the same now the previously it was the b point now it will be remain on the same position okay the it is going to give you an angular displacement but your b point the center of buoyancy will remain on the same position whether you are going to be tilt your body or not if you are giving the angular displacement but the force acted by the displaced fluid that will remain going to be act on the same position your fb is going to be act on the b point that was previously at that particular position so your uh, point center of buoyancy uh, now uh, previously it was at point b and now the that point b now converted into b1 when it is tilted so this position will remain same for the tilted body also okay so your force of buoyancy is going to be acting as an upward thrust on passing through the center of buoyancy it will remain the same okay because the fluid 
food that has been displaced it will be the same that that point we were discussing so this is the particular case uh, when you have uh, the uh, force of buoyancy now v1 for the tilted body after giving angular displacement then what about the new uh, coinciding line mean new normal axis now you are going to be mark your normal axis passing through the the center of buoyancy if we are going to be mark that line that axis so it is going to be intersect your normal axis that was previously in the just vertical direction when your body was in vertical direction once it is going to be coincide with that so it is going to give you an end point an intersection point so at point m your uh, new tilted one or after giving the angular displacement that force of buoyancy that has been passing through the center of buoyancy so that axis that is going to be passed through the center of buoyancy in tilted case has been going to be intersect with the normal axis of the stable case mean vertical case when your body was vertical case that is going to give you a point m so that intersection point will give you point m so that gm distance is going to be called as metacentric height or metacenter m is going to be called as meta center of the body and gm is the height that is going to be called as meta center so this determination of meta center is very important this point m is very important to be determined for the immersed body for the stability of the immersed bodies within the fluid so the point at which the line of action of force of buoyancy will meet the normal axis of the body when the body is given a small angular displacement that that's what i have explained you that now if you are giving a smaller displacement angular displacement then your point of buoyancy center of buoyancy has been not going to be shifted it will remain at the same position okay and now if you are going to be mark another axis passing through vertical axis passing through the the center of buoyancy v1 then it is going to be coincide the original normal axis at point m this will be going to be represent as the meta center so you need to consider that that's what is written in a statement form that you are considering a body floating in a liquid let the body is in equilibrium and g is the center of the gravity and b is the center of buoyancy for equilibrium both the points lie on the normal axis which is vertical let the body is given a small angular displacement in the clockwise direction the center of buoyancy which is the center of gravity of the displaced liquid will now be shifted towards right from normal axis let it be at phi b1 as shown in the figure the line of action of the force of buoyancy is in this new position will intersect the normal axis of the body at some point say m and this point m is called as meta center of this body and in the later slides we will see how this height of the meta center from the centroid of the body g we are going to be determine and this point or location of the meta center is very important for the uh, forces for the bodies immersed in the liquid now as i told you that uh, we will discuss about the equilibrium of the floating floating bodies when a body floats in a vertical equilibrium in a liquid the forces present are the up thrust force r force of buoyancy acting through the center of buoyancy p and the weight of the body w that is acting through its center of gravity in downward direction we can see this figure and this figure is going to be explain you that how the forces are going to be act on a body that has been immersed in a liquid the first of all the weight of the body itself that has been passed through the center of gravity capital g then second force has been acting in upward direction as an upward thrust that will be equal to the force of buoyancy passing through the center of buoyancy capital b and this is this hatched part is going to represent the volume of the fluid that has been displaced by this body the whole of the body is not going to be immersed in the liquid a part of the body has been immersed so what does it means that it is going to give you a different uh, center of buoyancy okay let's suppose if your body has been immersed fully into the liquid then maybe a chance when you have the force of center of buoyancy and center of gravity coinciding with each other 
but if this but may not be in both of the cases you may have chances but for this particular case when the, the part of the body has been immersed then your center of buoyancy and center of gravity will be different apart each other and those are not coinciding with each other but those are lying on the same vertical normal axis that has been passing through the weight of the body then the, the, the central gravity mean uh, the centroid and then the b force of buoyancy and the r so all of these forces are going to be passed through b and g and your b and g are lying on the same normal axis or the vertical axis so for equilibrium of this body that has been immersed in the liquid r and w must be equal the weight of the body that is acting downward and the upward thrust it should be equal to each other and it should act in the same straight line mean passing through the same normal axis that axis will be the same vertical axis should be the same now r will be equal to the weight of the fluid displaced mean rho g v where v is the volume of the fluid displaced so what does it means that you are going to be can write this equation like v is equal to mg over rho g and m over rho the equilibrium of the body may be stable may be unstable may be neutral once we talk about the equilibrium of any body like a solid also for the fluid also so we we can categorize our stability in three uh, groups what is stable then unstable then the neutral mostly we will talk about the stable and unstable conditions so depending upon whether when given a small displacement it tends to return to its equilibrium position it will be a stable body move further from it or remain in its displaced position so what about the stability stability is the tendency of the body when it is going to be displaced given a certain displacement and it returns to its original position it will be a stable body what about the unstability when it is going to be moved a little bit or displaced a little bit but it will not come to its original position it will be unstable body and if we are going to be displace it it is going to give you a certain displacement but at a new position it will going to give you a stable condition it will be a neutral for a floating body such as a ship stability is of a major importance and particularly for these type of the bodies practically these are the going to give you a practical examples of uh, use of or determination of the meta center height and force of buoyancy that how force of buoyancy is going to give you a stable conditions so continue with the stability for a body totally immersed in a fluid the weight w is equal to mg act through the center of the gravity of the body that we have been discussed earlier while the up thrust for r acts through the centroid of the body b that is the center of buoyancy whatever the orientation of the body these two points will remain in the same position relative to the body that that's what we have discussed earlier okay if this is the normal axis that has been marked passing through the b and g point so for both of the cases your r and is acting upward force of buoyancy and your w has been acting downward that is passing through the force of uh, center of gravity so these are going to be passing through the normal axis okay so once you are going to apply a certain angular displacement and after applying a certain angular displacement your body will be stable it is not going to be sink okay so we are going to say it is a stable condition stable equilibrium when w is equal to r and point b is above the g it has been analyzed after after th this particular case this for the stable stable conditions of the body your point b must lie above the g point okay so and your w must be equal to r that's obvious so it can be seen that a small angular displacement theta from the equilibrium position will generate a movement that will be equal to w into bg into theta okay so this bg is the inclined distance so if we we want to determine the movement so for the movement we need the horizontal distance so that horizontal distance between this point b and g that will be equal to bg theta so why is it it is theta because if we are going to be consider sin of theta so this is smaller uh, displacement so in radians if we are going to be determine the theta it will be negligible 
so sine of theta with a very small value of the thetas in radians we can say it is negligible so it will be only th theta so bg of theta will be the horizontal component of this couple produced by these two forces r and uh, weight of the body okay r is the force buoyancy force of buoyancy and uh, the weight is acting downward so this is going to produce a couple that will be in this direction okay so your angle is going to be your body has been displaced with an angular displacement in a clockwise direction and your body has been going to produce a couple for the stability equal and opposite couple has been produced in anti clockwise direction so if the center of the gravity g is below the center of uh, beyond cb this will be a writing movement so in technical terms we are going to be uh, uh, see in the literature and also for these type of the cases these type of the movements for the stable conditions when your g is below the b then we are going to say this is a writing movement and the body will tends to return to its equilibrium position so once we are going to be remove this angular displacement then your body will come back to its original position mean it will be vertical again this is the angular displacement that has been given after giving this angular displacement a writing movement a couple has been produced that will be equal to the w into bg theta and then if once we are going to be remove this angular displacement it will come back to its original position so this is a stable condition for any immersed body within the liquid under the action of weight of the body and weight of the fluid displaced by the body mean force of buoyancy so these two forces are mutually going to be produced a stable conditions under the condition when your g is below than b so you need to consider a body floating in equilibrium the weight w is equal to mg acts through the center of gravity g and the up thrust r mean force of buoyancy acts to the center of buoyancy b of the displaced fluid in the same straight line as w so this is the same case that we have been discussed earlier in which we have a body that has been immersed in the liquid and whatever the weight of the fluid has been displaced by this body that is going to be equal to the force of buoyancy mean up thrust force has been acting on the body and equal to the center of gravity or centroid of the displaced fluid that will be your force of your, your center of buoyancy b and your force of buoyancy has been passing through or going going to be acting on the center of buoyancy and similarly your weight has been acting downward and it is going to be passing through the center of gravity okay so this is the same uh, case or you can say same uh, condition in which your body has been immersed inside the liquid now when the body is displaced to an angle theta this is the same thing we are providing the angular displacement w continues to act through g the volume of the liquid remains unchanged since r is equal to w but the shape of this volume changes and its center of gravity which is the center of buoyancy moves relative to the body from b to b1 if the shape of the fluid that has been displaced by the body is not going to be changed then your b will remain on the same position but once the shape of the fluid that has been displaced by the body has been changed then your point mean the center of buoyancy has been changed center of the fluid displaced by the body has been changed so now this new position will be b1 okay so if this is the particular case then the point of uh, passing mean application of the force of buoyancy has been changed now okay so previously it was along the normal axis now if it is going to be give a certain tilt then the shape of the fluid that has been immersed by the body has been changed and for this the center of buoyancy is also going to be changed now your force of uh, buoyancy will be in the upward direction and this point of application will be like this so if this if we are going to be uh, mark or going to be point uh, vertical axis passing through the center of buoyancy it is going to be meet or going to be cross your uh, previous normal axis that has been passing through the center of gravity so one axis you need to be pass through the center of gravity and one axis you have to pass through the new uh, center of buoyancy so for that particular case those are going to be intersect with each other at a point that is going to be called as m that is meta center okay so here if this is the particular case then what is the condition two conditions we are going to be discuss over here okay that your b has been shifted to b1 
since r and w are no longer in the same straight line a turning moment proportional to w into theta is produced that case we have discussed earlier okay so turning moment mean the stable conditions your body will be in a stable condition when i mean it will come back to its original position once the angular displacement has, has been removed so which is a righting moment and in second case it is an overturning moment so first case is this figure okay that is shown when you are going to be provide a uh, movement and this is going to give you a writing movement mean it will come back to its original position now this is the case when you are you are going to be provide the angular displacement in such a way that it is go on rotating your body okay so now after that your this axis that has been uh, horizontal previously mean normal axis now this normal axis will move further okay so here the normal axis is this one now if you further provide this this will not be the smaller angle now if you are going to be provide the larger tilted angle or the larger angular displacement then your normal axis that previously was this one now it will be going to be produced a further movement in this direction and it will be going to be rotate like this so it will go down your body it will be immersed more or the further it will go down inside the fluid so if this is the particular case then your meta center now will be the same your force of buoyancy is acting over here and your b1 is going to be uh, move over here so this is the b1 and you are again going to be mark or going to be pass one uh, line uh, passing through the center of buoyancy the shifted center of buoyancy then it is going to be intersect your normal axis at this point this will be equal to meta center capital m okay so this angle will be more now theta will be more and equal to this movement the movement has been produced and it is going to be rotated or tilted this is going to give you an overturning movement now your body will not come back to its original position because the larger displacement has been put on and it will be an unstable condition for the body so for this particular case if m is the point at which the line of action of the upthrust r cuts the original vertical through the center of gravity of the body g then you can determine this x distance this x distance will be equal to gm into theta okay so if you are going to be solve this uh, triangle like this so gm can be calculated so this smaller triangle can be solved very easily and here in this figure m is this one okay so theta is this one inside of the triangle and if you are going to solve this triangle then this gm distance this distance can be calculated okay and x distance is this one so you have gm into theta provided that the angle of tail theta is very small then sin theta will be equal to tan theta and it will be equal to theta in radians your point m is called as the meta center and the distance gm can be calculated that will be meta centric height so this gm meta center height is very important in this particular case okay so for both of the cases when you have a stable condition and your body is this one and you are providing a smaller angle and it will come back to its original position here your m is above the center of gravity okay and in this uh, and uh, the center of buoyancy your meta center is above the center of buoyancy for the stable case once you are providing a certain amount of the theta that is a smaller one and it will be a stable body and stable equilibrium and your body will come back to its original position but for the other case when we have discussed the larger uh, mean angle tilt in which your body is not coming back to its original position here your meta center is uh, below the center of gravity and still above the uh, center of buoyancy mean your meta center is in between the center of gravity and center of buoyancy but here your meta center is above both of the center of gravity and the uh, center of buoyancy so this you need to be keep in your mind so that we can uh, discuss about the meta center now depending the upon these slide. relationships of uh, meta center and the center of gravity then we can define again our stable equilibrium and unstable and neutral equilibrium now your stable equilibrium is if your m meta center lies above the center of gravity a writing movement w into gm into theta is produced equilibrium is stable and gm is regarded as positive that is very important gm is the metacentric height so your metacentric height is considered as positive 
for the unstable equilibrium if your meta center lies below the g center of gravity and overturning moment w into gm into theta is produced equilibrium is unstable and your meta center height gm is regarded as negative that is the second case that we have discussed in the previous slide so with respect to or with relative to g and m we can again define the stable equilibrium and unstable equilibrium and for the neutral if your meta center coincides with the g the body is in neutral equilibrium so you have to keep remember these two different definitions of the equilibrium or the stability of the floating body when it will be a stable equilibrium in case of the uh, relative to m and g and when it will be a stable equilibrium relative to b and g okay so for these cases you have going to define your stable equilibrium in two forms one with a relative to m and g and one relative to c and g a b and g sorry okay so in this way you can define your equilibrium conditions for the stable body floating bodies so here you can see a, a figure in which a ship has been shown so if let's suppose the dimensions are different for a certain type of the floating bodies in different directions here you can see three axes one axis is the y you can see over here smaller one is x one is z c is the vertical axis y is the lateral axis and x is the longitudinal these both y and x are horizontal axis but these are also the longitudinal and lateral axis okay longitudinal mean the axis horizontal axis that is passing through the length of the body okay along the length of the body so this will be a longitudinal axis if you are going to be provide a tilt that has been going to produce a movement about the longitudinal axis for the ship for the design of the ship it is called as the rolling of the ship if you are going to be provide a tilt for about the lateral axis of the ship then it will be going to be called as pitch of the ship if along the vertical axis we are providing a tilt or or the movement that will be a yawing okay it is in technical term it is called yaw or the yawing so this will be different if you want to determine the meta center or the meta centric height and you want to analyze the stable stable conditions of the float of this body of this ship that whether it will be after providing that much amount of theta whether it will be a stable body or it will be unstable what about the equilibrium conditions whether it will be stable equilibrium or it will be unstable equilibrium so to analyze it we are going to provide a theta mean angular displacement this angular displacement will be different for the different uh, about the different axis for the lateral axis it, you need to determine the meta centric height uh, separately and about the longitudinal axis you have to determine the meta center height differently okay so this is the point that for one particular body if the meta center height is different uh, after providing a theta or angular displacement in different dimensions then you have to determine the meta centric height about the different axis and you have to determine it separately because maybe maybe this ship will give you a stable condition for one type of the angle I mean roll if you are providing an angle as in rolling this moment you are providing this angular displacement then it may give you a stable condition but about the lateral axis mean your pitching may be giving you the unstable condition for the same amount of the theta so that theta at which the meta center height will be positive it will be a stable equilibrium you have to determine that particular value of the meta centric height and about providing a certain tilt a certain theta about a certain axis like lateral or longitudinal so separately you have to determine and you need to find out the stable uh, conditions of this uh, ship if it uh, needed to design now we talk about the meta centric height the distance mg that we have been talking about throughout this lecture is the distance between the meta center of a floating body and the center of gravity of the body okay experimental determination of the meta centric height how you can determine for that particular case you can take a floating body with a shape this this is the lateral you can say a cross section of it so in the length it may be like a ship okay you can consider this shape as a shape like this and it may have a certain dimension in along the length and we will discuss this in our job okay almost same kind of uh, the body we are going to be selecting in our lab also to determine the meta centric height for a floating body so this body will can give you 
in the lateral direction almost the same shape okay so in the same shape it may give you this dimension okay in the lateral direction like this okay so this will give you a ship like shape for this body and you are uh, trying to immerse this body inside the fluid okay so the metacentric height of this floating vessel can be determined provided we know the central gravity of the floating vessel so first of all this g must be known to us where the central gravity lies so for that particular case what we can do we can draw this uh, view or, or this lateral or this cross section of this floating body and we can divide it into different cross sections and we can determine uh, or we can just mark an axis okay and we can determine its center of gravity i'm discussing we can determine its centroid okay how we can do that we will discuss in lab also or it may be directly given to you no need to determine it separately okay and we will discuss in the job part that how to determine if it if this kind of the body will be given to you to determine the metacentric height then how to determine its uh, center of gravity so it may be directly given to you or if the shape is given to you you can determine it uh, you can calculate it by the formula so let w1 is a known weight placed over the center of the vessel which is a floating so uh, how you can provide tilt if the weight that has been placed on this body an extra weight you can see over here this is the w1 that is an extra weight other than the um, weight of the body itself has been placed above or at the top of this body so this is going to be create another you can say reaction in the downward direction mean the weight will be this w1 is going to be produced an extra force that is uh, responsible to keep your body immersed in inside the inside the fluid so if this weight has been kept over the body so it will be in stable condition if the line of action of uh, this weight acting on or putting on the vessel will be equal to the weight of the body itself vessel itself but once it has been displaced either right or left like this it is the rightmost uh position okay corner so if it, ha it has been placed over here then what is going to be happen what do you expect we expect a movement in this particular direction okay so this kind of you can say angular displacement has been produced a couple has been produced due to the action of this uh, weight that is acting downward okay so this kind of the movement has been produced in this direction so this is going to give you a condition when you are going to be uh, uh, tends to tilt a body inside the fluid so your w is the weight of the vessel including w1 g is the center of gravity of the vessel and b is the center of buoyancy of the vessel now the weight w1 is moved across the vessel towards right through a distance x the vessel will be tilted the angle of heel theta is measured by means of plumb line what is this angle of heel the angle of heel is that the amount of the angle by which it has been tilted so if your body has been tilted like this okay so this was the vertical axis and now your weight has been causing it to be tilted in this direction so now this is the newly uh, vertical axis so this is the angular displacement theta that has been given so angle of heel is actually the angular displacement that has been given by applying the extra weight on the body so this angle of heel is measured how do you can you measure in the lab or practically experimentally so what you can do you can drop a uh, you can say a plumb a bob okay a plumb line you can use for that and you can use a protector attached to the vessel and in this particular case this angle can be measured by solving the triangle angle that has been formed due to the tilting of the uh, vessel so the new center of gravity of the vessel will be shifted to g1 and uh, the w weight one has been moved towards the right also the center of buoyancy will change to b1 as the vessel has tilted under equilibrium the movement caused by the shift of the center of gravity from g to g1 it will be like this that we have derived earlier okay that particular case so what is the value of uh, the uh, movement that has been produced it will be w that is weight of the vessel into g and tan of theta the component mean x distance by which the it, it, the weight has been going to be produced the movement and the movement due to movement of the w1 it will be w1 into x so both should be equal for the stable condition so you are going to be equating both of these uh, movements and you are getting the gm the metacentric height it will be w1 if weight is known to you 
and the weight of the vessel plus the weight of the, the weight that has been put on the vessel is known to you then you can take tan of theta of the angle that you are uh, calculating practically and multiplying it with the x distance so in this way you are getting the gm mean meta centric i another relation from analytical uh, determination from from the research is also given that the meta centric radius can be determined by taking the inverse of the volume displaced uh, of the liquid okay if it will be known to you the volume displaced by the liquid how much amount is it is then you can take inverse of it and it will be equal to the metacentric radius mean metacentric height so metacentric height in uh, conversely on in another form can also be relate with the volume of the liquid displaced okay that we will discuss in numerical part when we are going to solve the numerical parts and we are going to be use also this analytical uh, relationship but for the lab part for the experimental purpose if you are inter interested to determine the gm mean the metacentric height then this is this relationship is enough okay so if you will be able to um, to just uh, set up uh, your vessel okay and you can set up a device in which the fluid has been or a container in which fluid has been placed and one kind of a vessel that can act as a ship okay a model of the ship that can be acted like this and you can determine the these factors mean this x distance okay and uh, the w and you can measure it and theta you can determine and you can uh, input in this equation you can find out the metacentric height this metacentric height, height determination is very important you can find out it analytically and another way is experimentally and uh, in the job part we can also going to perform an experiment in which we are going to determine the metacentric height and we have all these apparatus in, in our lab and you are going to be compare your metacentric height with the analytically determined metacentric height okay so this is it from the topic of the beyonce in the second uh, part of uh, this lecture uh, you will study about the we will discuss about the numericals or the different uh, situations or conditions where the application of the met beyonce force of beyonce and the metacentric height will be there and we are going to solve the different uh, practical cases over there thank you so much guys uh, till this part